So to start our orientation to Draw.io or Diagrams.net, we're going to take a look at the screen and what everything is on there. So you have your normal file button. Your file button has your save, a share button, because of course this is a Google Drive uh, enabled or Dropbox enabled um, program, so you can easily share between them. You can open from a variety of different places. You can open recent. Notice that it saves things automatically because it is a Google Drive enabled um, element, so it's a lot like Google Docs. But because it saves them, you need to have a, a title name there or it'll keep saving them as untitled. You can go with new, you can rename, you can make a copy, you can move it to a folder. It has a lot of the functionalities you see here as you would see in uh, something like Google Docs. You can import it, export it, this is the important one, the export. That's how you output it in a different way than an editable form. You can embed it as an image into a website. You can publish it and publish it on the web. You can create a new library. Libraries are a more complex thing. We'll get into that later. But libraries basically are um, just places where images are stored and diagram elements are stored. You can look at the revision history. You can look at the properties, the page setup. You can print or you can close the program as a whole. So file is a pretty standard element in all of Google accessible activities. Under edit, the same sort of thing. You need to be, to get to see most of the edit things, you need to sort of be clicked on uh, an element inside the screen. So the edit button then, you have your normal cut and copy, your delete, your duplicate, um, edit data, um, edit tool tips, edit styles and geometry, selecting vertices, which are the edges, um, uh, sorry, the, the um, confluence of the edges, the edges themselves, selecting all and selecting none. View, once again, you get to see all the different panels. It's very interesting how you can have a variety of different panels. So the format panel is there, the search panel is there, the scratch pad, the page view, scroll bars, tool tips, grid guides, connection arrows, and connection points are all uh, at the moment on your menu. So this is a very menu-driven program. Arrange allows you to, as you would in a lot of drawing programs, move a diagram to the back so that it is behind uh, an element that you want to have in front. You can move it to the front. You can change its direction so you can flip it horizontal and vertical. We've seen that in uh, some of our design programs up till now. We can rotate, and that's a free rotation, or we can rotate sh uh, shapes by 90 degrees, or we can reverse the rotation. Um, navigation, um, you can go into different groups for that. You can insert um, a series of specific things, rectangle, ellipses, rhombuses, text, links. Uh, you can do a freehand. You can insert images at this point. You can take templates uh, from the web or from the program itself. You can insert a layout, which is uh, a very interesting um, methodology and, and something we will take a quick look at when we go there. You can group things together. Just as we were doing in design, when you group things together, it allows them to be moved as a single entity. It allows them uh, not to be edited as separate. So then you can save a lot of your work in subgroups so that uh, you don't ruin part of your flowchart when you are editing another part of your flowchart. There are a lot of extras, which we're not going to go into in this regard. There is a help button with a great search. Um, there is a user manual, um, and that is the menu part. On the right-hand side, you'll see the share. The menu we're looking at right now is the edit menu, so you get the view 100%, zoom in, zoom out, my favorite buttons, undo and redo, the delete button, the move to front to back. So we're in the uh, view. We have some view elements, then we have fill color, line color, uh, we can drop shadow. There's the different connection arrows we can use, and these are the arrows that you see here. Uh, but you can also use waypoints. Waypoints are uh, different types of connectors that wait for that secondary element to, to be put in. And then you can insert, and there's a whole bunch of different things you can insert at that point. So the side menu here is 
um, basically our shape menu. And, and our shapes are what this whole thing is about. This is a diagramming program. It is a um, planning program. So the shapes are really um, how we do those plans in a very visual way. Um, so on the left hand side you see search shapes. So that's when you can search for a specific shape you cannot see. There's a scratch pad. Um, the scratch pad is a place where you save things that you want to use time and again. Um, I'll just show you now um, how you add things and how you subtract them. Notice that my file name is Scratchpad. I saw the no, I didn't like that one. I didn't like the yes. Um, I don't like the untitled one. So I'll save my Scratchpad. My Scratchpad then becomes saved again without those elements. But then let me think about it for a second and I say, oh my goodness, I, I need those elements back. To get them back into my scratch pad or to add them to my scratch pad, all I need to do is click on them inside my diagram. Once I've clicked on an element inside my diagram that I brought in before that I'm going to use numerous times, I just come over to my scratch pad, I press the add button, and it automatically gets saved. So the scratch pad is really a work flow saving place. So it's a it's a place where you save things that you're going to use um, time and time again. You also have general shapes. Uh, general shapes normally are, uh, as the name may suggest, very general, but they're also contextually done by what you chose as your, your project in the beginning. Um, you have miscellaneous shapes. Those are a variety of different things um, that were selected from a different group of things. Titling is in there. Um, you have unordered lists and lists and sort of stuff like that. You have advanced shapes. Um, once again, those are very um, heavy shapes for, for large diagrams. And of course, because you chose flowchart as your activity, then you have all your flowchart shapes. And all of those things are in here. Um, notice the last change was two minutes ago. We've saved in between. Uh, as we change things inside the program, it gets saved. We still have it left as untitled. Um, you know, basically one of the first things we should do when we enter is change the name. And because we didn't, it's been saving it as untitled. So in this particular case, I have a lot of untitled diagram.dryos in, uh, in my files at the moment. So I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it flowchart. I leave the draw IO part there. And I'm going to rename it. I'm going to save it as an XML file because I want it to be an editable file. When I get around to um, making my selection about what I want uh, it to be, whether I want it to be a JPEG or a PNG, um, I can do that in an export file. I keep my scratch pad shapes there because those would work for me. Um, you can also get more shapes here on the bottom and that allows you to select a whole bunch of different shapes you can put into place and uh, you know there's software and networking this is a really interesting program for people who are doing um, a major diagramming for software development or networking um, so I'm gonna leave things as they are though they, that works for me as they look on the right hand side the last thing I selected um, it is a contextual menu. It is a menu that will talk about whatever it is. So it's either going to talk about the diagram itself because I've clicked off. It gives me my view and what my, my view grid point means. It gives me a page view. I can put in a background image. It has connection arrows and connection points. All of those are placed there. It gives me my paper size. I can edit all of these things at any time inside my diagram. Um, once I click on an element in my diagram, notice that it changes. It allows me to do things like text and style. Um, I can use fills. I can use different line think thicknesses. I can use opacity. Um, um, I can look at rounded, you know, a shadow, a glass. Um, styles and images that can all be edited here. The text, uh, you can choose any variety of different text font colors, whether you want it to be bold or italicized. Um, and arranging allows you to move whatever that is, either to the front or to the back. So that's our orientation to the screen for diagrams.net.